Hello and welcome to my little bookish corner of the internet. My name's Harriet. Today I thought I'd take you around my little trip to London. So last night me and my partner went to go and see Hayden Thorpe who is one of my favourite artists. We had such an amazing time and he's actually gone to work now. He works on one of the train lines so it's actually good that he can go to work straight from here because we're in the place where he goes to work. So usually he has to travel into London but he didn't have to today. So while he's gone, I'm going to explore London and maybe do some book shopping, go to some coffee shops and things like that. So I thought it'd be really fun to take you along with me. Okay, so this is the view. Please excuse the absolutely filthy window. But yeah, we got put on the top floor. So this is what we got to have a look at. It's really lovely this morning. I'll put some pictures in. Um, when the sun was coming up, it was absolutely stunning. And it's obviously a lot busier out there when we woke up because Callum had to go in quite early. He had to catch the train. There was hardly any people about. And now there's loads of people. So I'm excited to explore. A little bit nervous going around London by myself, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Could I look any more of a tourist? This huge backpack and a tote bag and... <sighs> okay, I'm actually back from London now. I didn't film as much as what I kind of intended to. I was a little bit stressed out. I don't tend to go anywhere by myself. A lot of the time I'll be with people when I go places and big cities really do freak me out. So I was very nervous and I didn't want to kind of get anyone's face in the film if they didn't want to be in it. It was really hard. It was so busy. I kind of forgot that it was a Saturday and that everyone goes out on a Saturday. Yeah, so there were quite a lot of people about and the weather wasn't all that great. It did stop raining after a couple hours, um, but it rained in the morning when I was trying to climb the waterstones. And I wanted to film outside of the waterstones, but then there was loads of scaffolding, so I didn't. But that was the first place that I went. I went and sat and had a little coffee and I finished Coraline by Neil Gaiman, which I'm going to do a review for at the end of this video, actually, because I definitely want to talk about it. Yes, yeah, so I had a look around there and it was actually double points at the time, so I did end up picking up the book, which I'll show you now. Can we guess the author? Of course you can. It is Always Coming Home by Ursula Le Guin. This is actually a lot bigger than what I thought it was. I've only ever seen it online, just the front cover, and I just assumed it would be quite a small book. But this is really interesting. So it seems to be following a kind of people called the Kesh that Le Guin has obviously made up, and this is individual stories from that kind of society and the people within it. So. It's got kind of illustrations in there, very small text. I think it's got newspaper articles and stories that maybe tell you kids and history. So I think this is going to be really interesting and a deep dive into the society, which doesn't exist, but I'm sure she'll make it feel like they really did exist at one point. I really don't know too much about it. I just know that it's one that I don't have yet. So I picked it up and got double points for it, which is always a bonus. But yeah, after Waterstones, I just had a little walk around. I walked from there to Oxford Street, I think it's called, where all the shops are, but that was crazy busy. It really stressed me out. So I ended up finding a wasabi and sitting and eating. I think it was like a vegan chicken katsu curry thing. It was really nice. Um, and some sushi. And I tried this matcha blondie that was really good as well. It was essentially just a day of me eating loads of food and trying loads of weird drinks, but that was fine. I was just waiting for Callum to finish his shift so we could go home, but I actually met up with Rachel from Rachel's Reading Nook as well. I'll leave her channel link down below so you can go and check her out, which is really lovely. Hadn't ever met before and I'm not very good with meeting new people, so I was very nervous, but she was really lovely and we went to this place called The Prince, which is kind of like a fancy cocktail drinks place. Um, there was a waiting list and everything. It was a little bit crazy. I felt very out of place. But yeah, we sat there for a little while and chatted, but didn't have a lot of time because I had to go and meet Callum. Uh, but she was really nice and she actually gave me a book to read, which she has done a video on, so I'll leave that link down below as well. That is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I don't know too much about this, so I'll read the synopsis. When Amira is apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping the white child she's actually babysitting, her employer Alex resolves to make things right. So begins a crash course that will upend everything they think and they know about themselves, each other, and the messy dynamics of privilege. So I think this is going to be quite an eye-opening book and I'm really excited to start it. And it's even more special because Rachel's read it before. So I'm going to read this before we meet up again and then we can have a chat about it. So I'm really excited. Um, so along with this book, I'm actually going to be reading another one with Rachel, which I got for 50p at Cherry Shop the other day, which is just mental. It's Cersei by Madeline Miller. Such a beautiful looking book and I've heard so many things about this. After reading Lavinia by Ursula Le Guin, I realised that maybe I like historical fiction and I want to give it a bit more of a go. So we're going to be buddy reading this and then meeting up and talking about it. And I feel like maybe we're going to do a little video together. So keep your eyes out for that. 
But yeah, if you don't know what this is about, again, I'll read the synopsis because I'm not totally sure myself. In the house of Helios, god of the sun and mightiest of the titans, a daughter is born. Circe is strange, not powerful and terrible like her father, nor gorgeous and mercenary like her mother, but she has a dark power of her own, witchcraft. When Circe's gift threatens the gods, she is banished to the island of Aeaea, is that how you say it? Where she hones her occult craft, casting spells, gathering strange herbs and taming wild beasts. Yet a woman who stands alone cannot live in peace for long, and among her island's guests is an unexpected visitor, the mortal Odysseus, for whom Circe will risk everything. Circe's tale is a vivid epic of family rivalry, love and loss, the inextinguishable soul of woman, burning hot and bright in the darkness of a man's world. So I think it's going to be touching on a lot of important topics while being in this historical setting and following these historical characters, so I'm really excited to read this. But yeah, we met up and then after that I did end up going home on the train and it was just a really lovely day, I really enjoyed the gig beforehand. We went to see Hayden Thorpe, I don't know if any of you will know who that is, but he used to be in a band called Wild Beasts, which has been my favourite band for years and years. They did unfortunately split up, but it's because the two singers wanted to go kind of separate ways musically, um, and Hayden's new stuff I just really, really love. It's very kind of peaceful, but thoughtful, and he's got an absolutely incredible voice. He sounds exactly the same live as what he does on the studio recording, and he had like a little band with him, and it was just really lovely. Such a lovely experience. So I will maybe leave a link to his Spotify down below so you can check out his music. It's not for everyone. It is a bit weird, but I really, really love it. So yeah, that was our little trip to London. I had such a great time. And now I thought I'd do a very quick review for Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Now the edition I've got here has been illustrated by Chris Riddle. His illustrations are really, really cool and also very creepy. If I find one to show you. I mean, just an example there. It's a little bit scary, but it's been done very well and it really added to my experience with this book. Um, I wanted to read this after seeing the film. The film is really, really good. I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a gothic children's film and it uses stop motion, which I always really enjoy. I think it's very impressive that that kind of animation exists and people have the time to do it. But we are following Caroline Jones as she moves into this new house and it's quite a big house. So it's shared between multiple residents and she finds this door that leads to a brick wall and then one night she opens it up and it turns out to be a corridor into this kind of other world where everyone within this house is also there but they are a slightly different version of themselves and they all have buttons for eyes so it's very creepy anyway it gave me very kind of autumny vibes it was the perfect time of year to read it and a really nice setting to read it in as well because london is very much built up and very modern and this felt kind of more classic so it was nice to bring me down to earth a little bit. It definitely has some creepy vibes, but I actually think that the film is a little bit creepier. I think because you have that literal visual element um, that you can kind of cling on to, whereas this you do have to use your imagination a little bit, but it is very clear what's going on because it is a children's book. So it's not hard to follow. I think my problem is that I know the film so well because I've watched it so many times and it does follow this book pretty much to the T. I don't actually think I noticed anything that is different. The storyline is the same, the characters are the same. So yeah, for me, I think it made this book seem slightly less interesting to me because I wasn't waiting to see what happened. I kind of knew what would happen. And that's such a shame. I did ruin it for myself. It's not the author's fault whatsoever. My fault for watching the film too much. Um, but unfortunately, for that reason, I couldn't give it anything higher than a four star because it just didn't grip me as well. And personally, I do think that I enjoy the film a little bit more. It probably takes just as long to read this as it does to watch the film. I feel like it's probably quite similar. It's a very short book, but I do really like it. And I definitely would recommend it to anyone. If you maybe want to dip your toes into horror, but you don't like anything too spooky, then this would be perfect and really good for young adults as well. I think my favorite thing within this book is just how weird everyone is. All the characters are very strange, but they're very well established and they're all very different from each other. They've all got very strong personalities and there is a talking cat. So, I mean, you know it's good. So yeah, this ended up as a four star read for me, but I definitely do recommend it and think that anyone should pick it up if they like the idea of it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I didn't film a lot in London. As I say, I'm just a bit of a nervous human being, um, but I do hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you thought and let me know if you've read the books that were mentioned in this video as well, what you thought of them. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.